I used to think travel was about the adventure. And I would constantly be consuming the books, the movies that showcased all the amazing places to visit. I even went to some of those places. But all that changed around five years ago when, it might sound stupid, but I retired. Who would have thought retirement, having the time to travel, would make me reassess what travel was in the first place? You see, technically, I've moved and I've traveled my entire life. Dad was a Marine. My childhood was picking up and going to new places more frequently than average. Then when I became an adult, I actually looked for jobs that would allow me to travel. So I joined the Navy. My travel life up until retirement was 90% based on the places that the military told me to travel to. And thankfully this included a decent amount of overseas locations. Then maybe 10% places that I would go when I was on leave. But for the most part, I went where I was told. I lived the life I was told to live. So when I retired, I was really excited to start designing my own life. And so the first place I landed was van life, the perfect blend of affordability with flexibility and having quality time with my son. And as I started this brave new adventure, it didn't take very long for me to realize that my favorite part of travel was actually not the travel and maybe not even seeing the new things, being in the new places. Mount Rushmore, Glacier National Park, all amazing, highly recommend. But the real point of travel, I don't think that's what it is. The truth is we're all, just as people, going on a journey, developing ourselves as we go. And our decisions, our decisions about college, getting a particular job, starting a family, having kids, and deciding where to live, how to live, the lifestyle, all these decisions assist, hopefully, with our inner development, with making us better somehow. Every location in the world has inherent qualities, inherent characteristics that can support some type of beneficial change inside of us. Some places teach self-reliance while other places focus on community. FDR traveled to Warm Springs, Georgia to help him with his ailments, to help him with his polio. The connections we can realize internally as we change our external world. See, some things start from within, but some things start from the doing and the actions and the changing externally. It's a little like fake it till you make it, but also not. A lot of us underestimate the importance of actually having our space clear and being a little bit more minimalist because it really does affect the way we think and the way we function. Likewise, escaping our lives through travel gives us an opportunity to act out the theories we have in our mind about how we really want to be. And travel can enrich our perspective, give us kind of a reality check on our own significance or insignificance and how that's a good thing, a great thing even. And nowadays life, modern, regular life, it's got a lot of conveniences. And so we can get aha moments and inspirations from just living in a more diverse city or environment. We have what feels like an infinite number of books and videos, classes we can take, the ability to connect with people virtually in today's world, the ability to just, without leaving our home, experience everything is phenomenal. It is probably one of the most remarkable things about this, this modern world that we live in. It's epic. We don't have to go to China to kind of experience it. But I'll also add that the ability we have to connect with people from around the world and to see how people live around the world is misleading. It, it gives us what feels authentic and what feels all-encompassing, but it's not. It's, it's virtual reality, not reality. In today's world, we've kind of minimized travel to an experience. You know, travel is, is a vacation from everyday life, which is great, but travel does still have the ability to, to not just 
give us a break, but to show us different ways of living, to show us that the things we think we need in life, maybe, maybe it isn't. Maybe it isn't what we really need. My friend, Karen, from Mom on a Journey, when she was thinking about coming to Mexico, she asked me, at the time I was living in Merida, Mexico, she asked me, how long would you recommend we stay in Merida? Like, is, is two weeks too long, too short? It was a really hard question for me to answer because I knew that what she meant was, what is there to see and do in Merida? And how long will that take? You know, kind of like when you go to, to Disney World, Disney World has what, five or seven different worlds and so if you if your intent is to visit all of disney world can you do it in one day probably not so maybe three days maybe four days maybe you want to spend an entire day in each location that's what she was asking me and i have a hard time viewing cities as many adventures that you can you know one day for a cenote another day for a ruin a third day to visit downtown the benefit of having lived in mexico is the living in Mexico. So if you just want to visit all the sites of a location, one, maybe three days will do it. But if you want to gain all the benefits, you might want to stay a little or a lot longer. I mean, I think Karen asked me that early 2021 and she's still in Mexico because it has so much to offer. It just, it takes a while to let it soak in.